This video is brought to you by my members. Join today by clicking the button down below. Oh, Bale, tyrant Drake, do your wounds yet ache? Is your fury still yet to crest its zenith? Hurry, hurry and lay it all to waste. Lay waste to the proud, the conceited. Each and every last one of that arrogant lot. The Dragon Bale was known by many names. The Tyrant, the Dread, and the Terrible Harbinger of Destruction. Bale's whole existence is a tale of violence, terror, betrayal, and a hatred that would seemingly never die. Festering within the hearts of every being touched by it. There isn't much told to us by the DLC about Bale's origin, so let's start with what we do know. Bale is described as the oldest, vilest dragon of them all. He appears to be a drake, the two-legged, two-winged versions of dragons in Elden Ring. He resides at the top of the jagged peak. His roars are said to cause the peak's molten fury to boil and churn. Magma that has long since cooled can be found throughout the mountaintop's sharp landscape. When we face the Great Dread, he is severely wounded, missing a leg, and his wings are mangled and tattered. On his back are remnants of the battle that left him in this disfigured state, the battle between a lord and the Dread. In a long time past, Bale turned upon the Dragon Lord. The foul traitor assailed our master and inflicted a grievous wound, only to make a hasty retreat, becoming a sworn enemy of the brood. The Talisman of the Dread describes Bale's challenge to the ancient dragon lord. Their battle ended in grievous mutual injury. We've already mentioned Bale's injuries, but what of Placidusax's? One of his hind wings is completely torn off, and his tail is damaged. As Bonfire VN and others have already pointed out, two of Placidusax's severed heads still remain attached to Bale's body, presumably being ripped from the Lord's neck. Necks? Uh, we'll go with necks. <laughs> we also see an extreme wound across one of Dragonlord Placidusax's main heads. Again, neck that area. <laughs> Before their great battle, or the Great Divide, came a greater betrayal. The Red Lightning Pot describes ancient dragons who betrayed their lord to side with a tyrant. This treachery actually directly led to Placidusax's injuries. Each of the Drake talismans describe the ancient dragons protecting their lords as a wall of living rock. But when Bale and Placidusax faced off, the Lord had no such protection, already abandoned by his own subjects, allowing Bale to cause him bodily harm. Something I want to point out is that if we look high above Faramazula, circling around in the storm, we'll see dragons. But not just any dragons. If we look closely at their models, these are not ancient dragons. Instead, they are drakes. Is this the remaining army of Bale the Dread? I actually really like this explanation because it gives us a reason why there are so many drakes flying above Faramazula, which is something I've always been curious about. But let me know what you think down below in the comment section. This solidified the great divide between the two broods, the ancient dragons loyal to their lord, and those who sided with Bale the Dread, and the Drakes. Thus was a new kind of dragon communion born. But before we discuss dragon communion, let's break down some fundamental information first. What is a Drake? A Drake is one of the two versions of dragons found in Elden Ring. Their signature characteristics are two legs, 
and two wings, which branch out around their shoulders. They can fly, but they can also crawl using their wings for support. Some of them have feathers down their necks and tails, and lastly, they each and all have a long pointed horn at the end of their nose. They're sometimes referred to as lesser dragons and low-born descendants of ancient dragons. But almost every single dragon we encounter in the early game is a drake. Agheel of the Lake, Smaurog the Sorcerer Devourer, Borealis the Freezing Fog, and most importantly, the elder dragon Grail. Grail's roar tells us that she was the mother of all dragons, dwarfing all who stood before her like a looming mountain. Grail can be found in a part of Caelid known as Grail's Dragon Barrow, but dragons were not limited to just this region. Long ago, the ice dragons were once lords of the mountaintops, until they were defeated by the fire giants and chased from the peak. Their frozen corpses still remain trapped amongst the ice there. Drakes upon their death drop dragon hearts, which are riddled with gravel stone and continue to beat even after being removed from their bodies. While it is a terrible, savage thing, it also possesses a peculiar beauty to it. Gravel stones are small clumps of sharp pointed stones that are said to be found in lands once beset by ancient dragons. And the sacred seals made from gravel stone are said to be an ancient dragon scale. Even though their hearts are riddled with it, drakes do not have gravel stone scales. That characteristic belongs to the ancient dragons. So what is an ancient dragon? I want to add a note here to briefly discuss George R. R. Martin's thoughts and opinions on dragons which he shared recently on his blog. Martin is extremely meticulous about the anatomy of dragons in his literature writings and makes a very clear distinction. I designed my dragons with a lot of care. They fly and breathe fire, yes. They have two legs and two wings. Not four, never four. Four-legged dragons exist only in heraldry. My dragons do not talk. They are relatively intelligent, but they are still beasts. Ancient dragons in Elden Ring not only have four legs, but they also have four wings. It's almost as if Miyazaki knew Martin's feelings and decided, let's see how mad we can make him. The ancient dragons crawl on all fours, occasionally standing on their hind legs to raise lightning bolts. Red lightning bolts, to be specific. The ancient dragon's lightning spear tells us that red lightning is the weapon wielded by the ancient dragons. Now, there are only a few ancient dragons left within the lands between. Lanciax, who seems to guard Alta's plateau, and her sibling, the lich dragon Fortisax, who has now been corrupted by death. But the most iconic image of an ancient dragon is actually a corpse the corpse of Grand Sax in the capital city of Lyndell. A spear whittled from Grand Sax's weapon tells us that he was a great ancient dragon who once rained calamity upon the royal capital. And then there is the lord himself, Dragon Lord Placidusax, whose gray and gold scales can be polished into ancient dragon smithing stones. The others we know of all reside outside of the lands between, either in Far Missoula or in the realm of Shadow. Something very important I want to point out is that none of the ancient dragons drop dragon hearts. They drop ancient dragon smithing stones, lightning incantations, remembrances hewn into the Erd Tree, but not a single dragon heart. I want to make my opinion very clear. Ancient dragons don't seem like organic life forms to me. Their scales are made from literal stone. Some of them even turn into statues upon their deaths. 
and they also don't come from a bloodline. Placidus X is never described as their father, but as their lord. They remind me more of the ancient stone golems, or grave birds. Just like the ancient dragons, grave birds fly with stone wings. Or even the alabaster and onyx lords, an ancient race with skin of stone who were said to have risen to life when a meteor struck long ago. Is it possible that the ancient dragons are amongst these ancient stone beings? Drakes are often described in a very negative tone, but they're actually closer to what real dragons would have been like if they actually existed, having feathers, flesh and scales, horns, and hearts. Just a little bit of food for thought as we continue this video. Now, who or what is Bale? Bale is called the Tyrant Drake, but is he truly a Drake? Looking closely at his design, Bale shows characteristics of both Drakes and ancient dragons. Bale's dragon scales look in line with the Drake's signature dragon scale flesh, rather than the gray and gold gravel stone of the ancient dragons. He also has the traditional two legs and two wings, but is noticeably missing the trademark nose horn. His face is also much shorter than other drakes, a characteristic of ancient dragons. There's also the detail of his extra set of wings. During the second phase of his boss fight, Bale is able to conjure a set of spectral wings. They form much further back on his body than his actual wings. This secondary set of wings looks extremely similar to Placidus Axis. It's been theorized by other lore enthusiasts that he's able to summon the Dragon Lord's wings because of Placidus Axe's severed heads, since they still remain attached to his back. While this isn't a perfect explanation, it's definitely plausible. There are, however, two characteristics that are unique to Bale. The first are his ram-like horns, three on each side of his head and curled inward. No other dragon in the game have these type of horns. The second feature is Bale's biatrial heart. Biatrial simply refers to the heart having two atriums, or chambers, the right and the left. His heart also seems to feature valves and an aorta, something that is found in human hearts. If we take a look at the dragon hearts dropped by drakes, they're missing all of these unique features. The only other heart that looks even similar to this is the priestess heart, but even then, it's not a perfect one-to-one -one comparison. Bale's Flame Lightning, which is one of the greatest dragon communion incantations, tells us the throbbing heart of Bale continues to resist its subjugation, never weakening. One day, the fire within will consume the very body and soul of its communion devourer. One day. Bale is found at the top of the Jagged Peak, a slumbering volcano along the coast of the Shadow Realm. We're told that Bale attacked Placidus Axe and then retreated, and we can make the assumption that Bale retreated back to the Jagged Peak. As we make our ascent, the clouds become denser, and red lightning scatters across the skyline, becoming more intense the closer we get to Bale's lair. And along the way, we can pick red flowers. This one item reveals something very, very important. Red fulgur blooms are flowers that crackle with red lightning, said to bloom where the red lightning of the ancient dragons strikes the earth. Red lightning is the answer. A different variation of this flower can be found in the lands between. Fulgur blooms are yellow flowers that grow in lightning-struck lands. Golden lightning is strongly associated with Godwin, the Prince of Gold, and his followers, the Dragon Colt Knights. The incantation Death Lightning, which we receive from Lich Dragon Fortisax, 
tells us that this golden lightning was once wielded by Godwin. Despite being corrupted, Lich Dragon Fortisac still wields red lightning spears, and unlike the golden lightning, this red lightning remains unchanged and uncorrupted. If we look at the dragon cult incantations, each of the spells with ancient dragon in the name features red lightning and are described as a secret, unlike the golden ones. Red lightning is the key. The Jagged Peak is the ancestral home of ancient dragons. It is where red lightning strikes the sharp gravel below and lights up the sky. Unlike Faramazula, where the storm rages. So why is Baal found on the Jagged Peak? Is Baal part ancient dragon? You may be thinking, a human Justicar, he is the tyrant Drake. How could he be part ancient dragon? Bale's fearsome power is actually something called flame lightning. Red lightning, as I've already mentioned, was wielded by the ancient dragons. Bale's flame lightning is definitely a shade of red, and the jagged peak drake can actually be seen using the same exact flame lightning, which could suggest that he passed it on to his descendants. Remember, none of the drakes in the Lands Between are able to conjure red lightning. That is something strictly reserved for ancient dragons. Yet Bale and the Jagged Peak drakes are somehow able to use this. That suggests this connection between Bale and the ancient dragons, which could be on his father's side in Dragon Lord Placidusax. I think it might be plausible that he is the son of Dragon Lord Placidusax and Grail, the Elder Drake. With Grail being the mother of all dragons, that at first led me to believe that she was Bale's mate, but I think it might also be possible that she is his mother, if not both. Some proof of this is the similarity in the Jagged Peak Drake's design along with Grail's. They both have the same gray skin, gray feathers, and gray horns. A story aspect that we've seen throughout Elden Ring is this powerful mother and her son who wages a violent war. We see it with Renala and Radon, as well as Merica and Mesmer. So who is to say that it's not the same with Grail and Bale? I actually really like this idea. A child attempting to usurp his father's power is a really common trope in a lot of myths and legends. So, I do think it is completely possible that Bale is Placidusax and Grail's son, but there isn't much more proof for this theory, though it is a fun one, so I think I'm gonna stick with it, but if you guys don't agree, I'd love to hear your opinions down below in the comments. Bale is without a doubt an anomaly. His design doesn't follow the rules of either dragon broods. He is unique, which makes his story even more interesting. There isn't much stated about the origins of Dragon Communion, but the Rock Heart does tell us that this heart was consumed in the ancient original form of Dragon Communion. Choosing to consume the Rock Heart while disrobed transforms a human's flesh into an ancient dragon. This effect is drastic and can only be undone by death. The ancient dragon man seems to have been a participant in this ancient ritual. The blade he wielded was the dragon hunter's katana, signifying him as a former dragon communion warrior. Dragon communion warriors were the agents of the ancient dragon's hatred towards their low-born descendants. But dragon communion forever changed as a direct result of the stalemate between Bale and Placidusax. Since that day, Bale and his bloodline, the Drakes, have served as sacrifices for Dragon Communion. Consuming a Drake's heart at the Dragon Communion altar makes their former power yours, with the incantations literally transforming parts of the user's body into dragons. The very seal of Dragon Communion itself consists of Drake's blood, 
But it's actually in Farah Missoula that we find the Drake Knight set, which features the spoils of a dragon catch, a symbol of pride for the one who was both a hunter and a partaker of communion. This is also where we see the mounted drake's head in the middle of this temple where we fight the godskin duo, and it could signify that this is where the birth of this type of communion took place. Something I find kind of ironic is that the helm of the Drake Knight set actually says, from birth, Drake Knights speak not a word. And yet, Egon exists. <laughs> but anyway, standing beside the giant Drake corpse at the base of the jagged peak is the dragon priestess Florisax. She was once an ancient dragon herself, but abandoned her old form for feeble flesh all so she could assist in the destruction of Baal the Dread. This grand altar seems to have been designed with one purpose in mind, to eliminate Baal and every last one of his bloodline, not only by hunting drakes and slaying them, but then consuming their very hearts. And this action has dire consequences for the Dragon Communion warriors even though it seems to be encouraged by both ancient dragons and the dragon lord himself. Langbaum warrior, my lord, Krasidusax, has shown your kind what must be done. Seek communion, sate your boundless appetite. I titled this section The Curse of Communion, but really it should be called The Curse of Baal. We'll discuss why a bit later. Those heroes who followed the guidance of Dragonlord Placidusax and partook in the consumption of Drake Hearts are ironically punished for it, in more ways than one. Upon their death, a dragon's caller bloom emerges, coarse with hot blood. This blood red flower blooms only once, from the hearts of those who oft partook in Dragon Communion. The most disturbing part is that the Kyler Blooms are used to craft Dragon Communion flesh, an imitation of Dragon Scale flesh, both of which are consumed by Drake warriors. But Dragon Scale flesh grows on aged dragons. Dragon Communion flesh, on the other hand, is crafted by human hands to sate the hunger of Drake warriors. Drake warriors become a addicted to the intoxicating heat of dragons, and Caller Bloom's course with the hot blood of fallen drake warriors. This means that there are those who've become so addicted to eating dragon flesh that they willingly consume the blood of their fallen comrades. Those who live long enough weren't much better off. Eventually, they would suffer a different kind of fate, transforming against their will into a magma worm. Flightless dragons with their stomachs filled with magma, cursed to crawl upon their bellies, shadows of their former selves. Those who perform dragon communion will find their humanity slowly slipping away. Once they fully succumb to their fate, they are left no more than worms that crawl the earth. We're never really told what activates this transformation, but there are a few options to consider. The most popular one is the idea of overconsumption, consuming too many dragon hearts. The more dragon hearts a warrior ingests, the more their humanity slips away, until one day it is gone forever. This to me makes the most sense. But another explanation could be that these unfortunate Drake warriors ran out of dragon hearts to consume. Let me explain. I had an idea that came to me while writing this script that I had never considered before. The more dragon hearts a Drake warrior consumes, the more insatiable their hunger becomes. It's the hunger that is the curse. No matter how many hearts, dragon scale flesh, or even dragon communion flesh that they consume, they will always want more. So perhaps, 
As their hunger grew, and without a way to sate it, so did the scales on their arms and legs, until finally they became the very thing they swore to destroy, a dragon. Florisax tells us to sate our boundless appetite, but it is just that, boundless. Take, for instance, the curse of the Wendigo. A number of Algonquian-speaking First Nation tribes in Northern America believe in the malevolent spirit known as the Wendigo. It possesses human beings, causing them to desire to eat human flesh, and filling them with an insatiable hunger. Yet the more human flesh they consume, the more emaciated and unrecognizable the person becomes, unable to satisfy the hunger within, and slowly losing their humanity. Sound familiar? I actually have a longtime friend who is Cree and lives in Alberta, Canada, and he told me that they still very much believe in the curse of the Wendigo. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on Dragon Communion and the fate of those who participate in it. An ironic thing is that I actually chose Dragon Communion on my first Elden Ring playthrough, so I would have been royally f in that world. <laughs> I would have 100% have been a magma worm. Now, why did I say that this curse should be called the Curse of Baal? Well, the first is the connection with magma. There are so many different types of Dragon Communion incantations that all do various different damage types, but magma is specifically reserved for magma worms and Baal the Dread. No other drakes or even ancient dragons can command magma. This ties back to Bale's lair on the top of the jagged peak. Its lava has long since cooled, but can be awakened by Bale's roar. The second reason is because of the bloodline. Florisax specifically says Bale and his bloodline, the drakes, which means that the intoxicating addictive blood that flows in the heart of drakes is the same which flows in him. And when consuming their hearts, drake warriors are consuming the cursed bloodline of Bale the Dread. I know a lot of people in my comments and in the community believe that Bale may have actually participated in Dragon Communion himself, but remember there was an original type of Dragon Communion the modern type of Dragon Communion that we participate in only came about after Baal and Placidusax's battle, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Baal to have participated in it. I'm not going to count it out completely because I do think it is an interesting topic, but I don't think that all of the evidence falls into place the way that other people are seeing it. So if you are somebody who subscribes to that theory, let me know in the comments why, because I'm just not seeing it. But how did Bale's bloodline become cursed? Well, I long thought that it could have been Dragonlord Placidusax who had done it. But honestly, I think it actually might have been Bale himself. This curse is his retribution, his vengeance toward the so-called brave warriors who animalistically feasted on the hearts of his brood. The curse of communion is the curse of Baal. This is his revenge. Now, if you thought that the dragon communion warriors were the only ones to engage in this barbaric act, you'd be wrong. All along the path to the top of the jagged peak are the drained corpses of fallen drakes. Their scales devoid of color, and their bodies covered in sharp gravel stone, which are scales of an ancient dragon that supped on the blood of lesser dragons. But who could this vampire dragon be? A lot of people think that the vampire dragon is Bale himself, feasting on the blood of his own brood. This could explain how Bale survived the battle with Placidusax, drinking the life essence of his own bloodline to preserve himself. As much as I really like this dark idea, I'm not fully convinced. The reason why is because Sharp Gravel Stone specifically describes an ancient dragon, 
something that Bale is never once said to be, despite the few connections and the theory I pointed out earlier. He is never described as an ancient dragon. This vampire ancient dragon was more than likely Dragon Lord Placidusax. Florisax tells us, My Lord Placidusax has shown your kind what must be done. That means that Dragon Lord Placidusax may have actually engaged in this barbaric behavior to show the warriors what they should do. This is a really fun and kind of wacky theory, so let me know what you guys think about it and who you think the vampire dragon was. Now, I couldn't make this video without talking about Bale's arch nemesis, the one whose soul yet lies on the mountain, the broken drake warrior, Egon. You, Bale! Egon was a warrior who challenged the vile dragon Bale only to be grievously injured and broken by fear. Egon was a poor scavenger his armor made of miscellaneous items, which he found on the dead, scattered across old battlefields. He, among others, found honor in dragon communion. He was guided and encouraged to feast upon the heart of the dread. Egon's cookbook can be found amongst the scorched remains of fellow drake warriors, their bodies all burned to a crisp by the giant fallen drake whose gaping chest serves as an example for all those who wish to commune with the ancient dragons. Egon's great bow is imbued with his obsession, his harpoons each made one by one in the midst of his agony, all so that he may kill the dragon who broke him. He even summons his past self as he was before, and at the end of the battle, he cries out one final time. Bail the dread! You shall haunt me no longer! Priestess Florisax has something very interesting to say when you ask her about Egon. I remember that name well. The Broken Drake Warrior. Driven by bottomless hunger and fiery ambition. Precisely what the Dragon Lord envisioned for men who partake in Dragon Communion. The mad hunger and fierceness of spirit that only flows from those young and short of sight. He rather reminds me of Bale, in fact. Her words reveal some very important takeaways. Placidusax envisioned the Drake Warriors as driven by hunger and ambition, but these traits are prevalent in those who are young and short-sighted. This paints drake warriors as pawns, directed towards danger while throwing caution and wisdom to the wind, searching for honor but only finding death or torment. Communion with dragons doesn't seem like it was ever a good idea at any point, with the rock heart telling us, the last thing the partaker saw with human eyes was a sunset, its colors faded and tarnished, a remote thing from eternity. Though it's not directly tied to Egon, I feel like this line evokes a feeling that ties to him perfectly. A hope for something bigger, but only finding regret and sadness in the end. The mass killing of dragons seems to have had the same effect in Elden Ring as it does in the universe of Game of Thrones. As older, larger, much more powerful dragons die, the young become weaker, smaller, and less formidable. Take for instance the Jagged Peak Drakes. These few remaining drakes are able to harness flame lightning, just like Bale does. But the drakes found in the lands between cannot wield lightning of any kind, the ability lost through the passage of time and the weakening of their bloodline. And when they die, they seemingly are gone forever.
This was a super long video and it took me so much longer than I had originally planned. So thank you all so much for being patient with me while I worked tirelessly at my desk. There was just too much information smashed in today's video, so please let's chat, let's unpack some of it down in the comments below. I know that Vadi Vidya's video on bail just came out, which is super poor timing on my hand, but it is what it is. I spent over a month working on this and I couldn't abandon the video, so let me know if we said anything different. I actually haven't even watched his video yet. I know a lot of lore channels have a lot of different opinions about bail, so this one is mine and I hope you enjoyed it. Also, I recently opened up memberships on my channel, so if you'd like to support me in the videos that I create, as well as get a few perks, hit the join button next to my name. Also, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, you should be. Don't forget to do that as well as like this video. As always, I can't wait to talk to you all in the next one. Bye! He appears to be a drake, the two-legged, two-winged virgin... virgin. <laughs> All so that he may kill the dragon who broke him. No!